G'day guys, we have got a 2012 Hyundai i20 1.4 litre. This one's come in for running very rough, engine light on, idling terribly. It came in yesterday, uh, I went outside to quickly check it with my Varus and had a quick look and the code was P0011, which is cam uh, camshaft over advanced. Um, and so the first thing I did was just quickly see how it revved and it revved quite nicely once it was above two, two and a half. Now that doesn't really mean too much, um, but uh, I just wanted to see if it was throughout the whole rev range or just that idle. And it idles very poorly, revving's very good. So I quickly got the scope leads out on the Verus and I just chucked them on the actual oil control valve down there just to see if we had PCM control of the solenoid. So the customer has replaced the solenoid already it has had oil flushes and made no difference and it's exactly the same. So initially when I had the Varus outside, it looked like I had no control from the PCM at all, which made me think there was a possibly a PCM driver issue. Anyway, uh, now that I've got it in properly and I have the Pico on it, um, the problem is that the Pico shows that I do have PWM control as you can see red trace is the 12 volt feed from the PCM or well, not from the PCM from the fuse and the blue trace is the PWM signal from the actual PCM so it's definitely getting a command signal from the PCM now I can't tell you why my Verus didn't see it outside and I don't know whether my Verus wasn't set up right I was in a bit of a rush or maybe it was intermittently not working at the time probably not it's probably my fault somehow Anyway, before we go ahead and do anything or order anything, we always double check everything. So now that we're in, I've got the Pico on. It does have command from the PCM. So what I'm gonna do is, well, what I did do is I just got a little cam crank correlation, which is down below. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and find a known good from the Pico library or see if I can find a known good from somewhere. And uh, we'll see if that is close or is off. And if that's off, then what we're going to be thinking is possibly a timing chain issue. So if that's well, if that's right, then obviously we can just eliminate that and move on to the next step. If it's wrong, we are probably going to have to take the covers off and have a good look at this manually. So let me find that um, good one and I will compare them and I'll get you back on here. So here is an advantage of having a Pico, the amazing support and the amazing amount of other users that upload known goods to the waveform library. So the waveform library, I don't think it's supported in Pico 7 yet, so I had to go back to Pico 6. But this is a good known crank and cam off the same engine, same car. And as you can see, the cam trace lines up almost dead on in the middle of these crank sensor parts. So, um, and that goes all the way across. Uh, and if we go to mine, we can see that mine is well advanced. That should be about there in the middle. And this one should be about there in the middle. It's well advanced. So the timing on this vehicle is definitely out. And it just goes to show that we need to confirm things and be comfortable with our tools. Obviously, if I was relying on what I quickly checked outside with the Verus, I, I might have been chasing a PCM. Instead, we double checked and we confirmed that we definitely do have PCM control of the actuator and the actual timing, the physical timing is out on this vehicle. Now, the service history has been great. So obviously we do know that um, there's been lack of oil changes in the past and uh, that could be contributing to why this timing may have skipped a tooth. So the next step, I mean, we could put an in-cylinder transducer in there, but we already know just by looking at that, that, that it's out. So there's almost no point. All right, here we are, guys. We got the uh, WPS 500 in it. We're gonna get a cranking compression waveform. We're gonna see the compression. We're gonna see how high it gets because technically, if the intake cam is advanced that far, it will be letting more air into the cylinder which would raise compression so we're going to compare what that is and then we're going to get the specs to see if it's higher or lower or what's going on to check our theory 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to get a running waveforms to see if we can get the actual valve opening and closing to see how far advanced it is just to confirm our theory you know really we should be getting a, a much lower vacuum than normal because the valve overlap is so high and the exhaust valve, the, the exhaust valve will be open at the same time so it really should reduce that intake manifold vacuum so we're going to try and prove that theory as well I'm going to get all the captures done and then we are going to bring it up on my uh, Microsoft Surface Pro tablet and I'm going to use my stylus pen because Pico 7 has got a new update and the pen works absolutely amazing now and um, that way I can actually share the screen and you can get a full view, good picture of it instead of me just putting this camera in front of the laptop. So let's get a cranking waveform first and we'll see what happens. As we can see there guys, uh, our compression there is quite high so what we'll do is we'll get the original specs and we'll jump on the surface and um, we'll analyse that a little bit further. Uh, in the meantime we'll try and get a uh, running compression to see if we can actually see these valve events happening. Now it runs very poorly on four cylinders and I've currently got one out, a uh, spark plug out so um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to continue running but uh, I'll give it a go. Let's try. Uh, that'll do for the running compression so I'll get that on the Surface Pro touchscreen and we'll open that up and have a good look. Alright guys so this is what I was referring to I just wanted to go or get you a better look at what I was looking at before because when I showed you it was uh, pretty glary on the laptop so I just wanted to show you in particular the cam signal here. What I was trying to say is that that cam signal on the known good is usually sitting in the middle of this area in between this section it was dead in the middle so we know that um, you know if we if we just zoom in a little bit on that take that away we know that it should be roughly around here where my cursor is so if I drag that cursor to the right spot where it should be roughly in the middle of it it is as you can see here it's that far advanced so anything to the right of this is retarded anything to the left of this is advanced so clearly our computer was reading correctly knowing that that cam signal should be here not here indicating advanced over advanced on the code so I'm just going to take you over to that instance on the capture now and we're going to have a quick look at it zoomed in because all we're really looking at is the is the bottom section of it so let's go to that Okay, here we are in the insulin on the capture. I'm not going to bore you with running it, zooming in, getting all that sort of stuff done because you probably already know that anyway. What I just wanted to show you is I've set up the cursors in the peak of the middle and I've just come down and zoomed in a little bit more so we can see some clarity. But as you can see at the bottom left here, we've got our zero degree mark there, 180, 360, 540, 720. And I've just zoomed in a little here. As you can see, this is roughly our zero line right there. I can bring the cursor down so you can see it. We're roughly on zero there. Um, and we can see our peak. We can see our vacuum is reaching about 0.2 of a bar. So, you know, I've just rounded it to say 0.3. And um, 0.3 of a bar is... 8.8 .8 inches of mercury of vacuum so this is running at idle and we know that vacuum is extremely low and that's obviously why the car was running like an absolute pig um, what we can see here is we can see that the intake valve which should open around the 360 mark here is actually opening around here 
so you can see how far advanced that is and what's happening there is it's creating valve overlap with the exhaust valve that should be obviously this period too and it's allowing exhaust gases into the intake it's reducing the actual intake manifold vacuum that's why we've got such a little vacuum and what it's doing is it's trapping more air on the intake stroke and it's raising the compressions higher so there's a few ways that we can see that this intake cam is advanced oh, hopefully that makes sense that you can see that obviously if you're seeing this capture for the first time then you know i'm probably not explaining it right you, you almost need to see the basics of the in cylinder cranking or, or running capture to, to know what i'm talking about there um, okay so we are on the timing diagram for the i20 and as we can see we've got our timing chain and um, we've got our mark at the bottom down here we've got our two cam sprocket marks right here these two little cutouts should be facing each other um, we're not worried about any of these because obviously that's when you install it brand new so the links don't really line up unless you spin it over a certain amount of time so we're never going to worry about that um, obviously with the crank we have got marks on the timing cover so i don't need to take the timing cover off all i need to do is line up my crank pulley on the front with the mark on the timing cover and i know that's in the right spot once we line that up we'll go up here and we'll have a look and we'll see if these two are facing each other and if they are then we know the timing's right if they're not then obviously we know we have got a problem with the timing it's, it's jumped the tooth somehow um, our cam crank correlation shows us that that looks like the case so we're suspecting that's definitely what it's going to be but we obviously want to prove it so we'll go out there and do that alrighty we've lined up the crank pulley down the bottom there hopefully you can see it um, I've got my little socket on there which I turned there and obviously that crank pulley the little notch in the front of the crank pulley lines up with the zero on the timing cover so let's go up to the cams and let's have a look our exhaust cam the little cutout right there where my finger is that is facing the right spot on the right angle matches up with this little dimple in the head and if we look at the intake one we can see it's facing up completely way off so somehow this intake cam has skipped a tooth this has had poor service history like i did say before i'm not sure if i actually did say before but it's got poor service history um, there is a chance the tensioner could have failed and skipped a tooth so we're gonna have to pull this apart we'll let the customer know that there's obviously a timing issue we need to pull it apart it needs a new chain kit and it needs a new tensioner now obviously we don't know whether any of the guides are broken or anything like that so obviously we need to pull it down a little bit further and, and confirm but as you can see we know for sure that that's the exact cause that's why our actual piece that's why our pcm is showing the p0011 intake cam over advanced because it is way advanced. What we're going to do is wait for the customer. We're going to get them a price. We're going to wait for them to see if they want to go ahead with it. If they do, we're going to get it all together. We're going to get some footage of it. Then we're going to get some after captures of a cam crank correlation and the in cylinder. And we're going to compare it and see the exact difference of where the actual intake valve does open on a good engine. So thanks for watching, guys. This is part one. And hopefully, if the customer goes ahead, we'll have part two for you very shortly.